Hi and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a quick look at the UiPath Orchestrator API using both the Swagger UI and also by using Studio. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, click that little red watermark down in the right hand corner. And also, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really, really helps my channel. So let's get to it. So basically, what is the Orchestrator API? Well, if we just have a quick look inside my Orchestrator here, we can see that you know we have a number of different entities in here. We have processes, assets, queues, triggers, users, machines. If we go into the automations, we can see that we have jobs, triggers again, we have logs, and over here we have folders and all kinds of other stuff. And what if we wanted to access some of this information without actually opening Orchestrator? For example, if we wanted to build a dashboard to monitor how many jobs are run and how long do they run for and things like that, how could we actually get to that data? Well, you can do that through an API, an application programming interface. And an API is, well, it's just sort of a set of handles that you can pull and get, um, get information back from whatever system the API exposes. And the Orchestrator API is quite extensive, actually, and it's very easy to access. It is exposed as what is called a REST service, and that means that you can access all of this data simply by HTTP. So let's have a, have a quick look at how you can do that. And what many people don't know is that with our cloud-based Orchestrator, we get what is called a Swagger user interface. And maybe you know Swagger. I didn't until just a short while ago. But what you can do up here in the uh, URL of your browser is after the orchestrator underscore dash, if you just delete everything else and type in swagger like that, you'll get to this user interface right here. And if I just open my orchestrator again here in, a, in another tab, we can see that all of these things that are listed in the swagger interface are things that we know about, you know, robots, releases, queues, uh, machines. These are all terms that we know from working with Orchestrator. For example, if we, um, uh, here we have the folders entity, right? If we go into our Orchestrator, we can see that, um, oh, I have to go into Orchestrator. We can see that in here I have one, two, three folders, and then my personal workspace, that's not really a folder. But we have three folders in here. So if we go back to the Swagger UI here, we can uh, expand this entity right here. And we can see that on the folders entity, we have a number of methods. You know, we can, we can get and we can post and put and delete. And these are just types of HTTP requests. And the simplest one and the one we're going to look at now is just a, a simple get request. What this does is, as it says, it gets the folders. So if we click this, we get another uh, sort of set of options here. And these are all, uh, arguments that you can use when making this HTTP uh, request. And we'll get into that in just a few minutes. What we can do up here under the folders, get folders method, we can click try it out. Because right now, if, if I don't click this and go over here to these arguments, we can't fill them out. Now, if I click try it out, then I can actually type into these fields right here. What I can also do is I can push this execute button here. And if I do that, we can see that we get something down here. And that's basically the response to our request. And this is JSON data containing the folders that are in our orchestrator. So we saw earlier that I have three folders here, another folder, automations, and tests. And if we go in here, we can see in this data, we have a folder called automations. We have one called test, and we have one called another folder. And then it has you know a bunch of other stuff attached to each of those folders. And but this really shows that just by using a simple HTTP request, we can get data back that we can, for example, use in a dashboard. Let me just show one more thing before we proceed, and that is the arguments up here. For example, we have an argument called top, and that means that if I type in top 100, I would only get the, the, the first 100 folders, and I could also do sorting and filtering and selection and stuff like that by using some of the other arguments. Right now, I'll just type in two for the top argument and click execute again. And if we go down here, we can see that this time we only get two folders back, the automations folder and the test folder. So that's all well and good. What can we do with this in real life? Well, 
If we look up here, we can see that we have a request URL, and that is including the arguments that we, we put in. So if I take this URL and paste it into another tab, we get that same data back that we just saw in the Swagger UI. So that's kind of nice. Now, we can only do this in the browser because I am already authenticated against this orchestrator. If you try this URL and you're welcome to try, you won't get any data back because you're not authenticated against my orchestrator. But this really shows you how simple it is to, to access this data. Now, what we can do is inside of Studio, there's an activity called Orchestrator HTTP Request. And that's really, really simple because what we can do with this is we can just define a variable for the JSON output. I'll just call it our result. And then it needs to know where to get that output or that result. And let's just open this little uh, editor here. And I could, of course, paste in uh, the entire URL, but it's only asking for the relative URL. So what we need to do is we need to delete everything up until the orchestrator underscore, and then enclose it in quotes. And this means that when this automation runs inside of my orchestrator, it knows that it needs to go to the OData folders endpoint and get the top two items. So we'll click OK. And just uh, let's do a message box. And we'll type out, or was it our result to string? So when we run this inside of our uh, studio, we should get a message box in just a second with that same JSON data that we saw inside of the Swagger URL. Now, again, remember, you need to be authenticated in some way against the orchestrator where you're getting this data from. So if you're doing it in a browser, you need to first actually log into orchestrator and then you can get the data using just a browser. But by far the best and easiest way to do it is simply to build an automation, deploy it to an orchestrator, and then data from that orchestrator will be readily available because the account running the automation usually has permissions to get this data. And if not, well, just, you know, <laughs> give the account some more permissions. Uh, and that way you can fairly easily build an automation that will get this data from orchestrator and return it to you. And then, you know, this is JSON data, I know that and you might want to convert this into some data tables, and that's not in the scope of this video, but you can quite easily get data from Orchestrator using this. Now, there's a limitation. These HTTP requests only allows you to get 1,000 records at a time. So if you're getting uh, data from an entity that, you know, contains tens or hundreds of thousands of records, then you're going to run into some problems. Now, using the arguments that we saw in the Swagger UI. Up here, you can uh, use different techniques to skip a number of records. You can get, as I showed you, a number of records, and you can also select limiting uh, the time span, for example, that you're getting records from. And that means that you could set it to only retrieve data from within a time span of one hour, for example. You could set it to retrieve a thousand items and then get the next thousand items by skipping the first 1000 items. And, and so jumping through a, a few hoops, you're actually able to retrieve all of the data that you want. And then you can put all of that data inside a SQL server. You can use, you know, um, whatever BI tool you want to, to build a dashboard with, you know, Power BI or whatever. Now, of course, if you're too lazy to do all of this and if it meets your need, UiPath does have a product of their own called UiPath Insights, and that will actually dig into the same data and let you build some, some fairly nice dashboards. I hope it all made just a little bit of sense. If it did, give the video a like and subscribe to my channel so you get more videos and also hit that notification bell. Uh, I hope you will stay safe out there. Take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.